Howard Shorts with a black and blue trim. At the weighing scale, 11 stone and 5 pounds, or 159 US pounds. His record, an excellent one, 22 contests, 17 wins. Six of those wins coming by way of knockout, only two defeats and three draws. He comes to the ring as the former All-African Light Middleweight Champion, hailing from Primrose in South Africa. Please welcome to Manchester, England, Ruben Grunewald. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing his familiar black colored shorts with a gold trim. At the way he also scaled 11 stone, 5 pounds, or 159 US pounds. He has an outstanding record. 30 contests, 29 wins. 20 of those wins coming by way of knockouts with only the one solitary defeat. Tonight, he is the second of our challengers from this fabulous city of Manchester. Both know the rules. Punch with an apple part of the glove. If one of you goes down, the other goes to the furthest of the corner. Break when I tell you to. Defend yourself at all times. Shake hands, boys. Good luck to you both. Well, expect this to be hard and grueling and maybe long distance. Anthony Farnell, who idolises Roy Keane. He's quite matey within the Manchester United and Ireland player. Keane, of course, missed his big assignment today. Farnell definitely is turning up for his. In the black trunks against this Ruben Grunewald who really fancies his chances comes from Brackpan in South Africa though based in London these days and trained by Alan Smith and part of the Eugene Maloney team Eugene who's Frank Maloney's brother Farnell in his fourth fight since his traumatic defeat against Takalu switch trainers from Brian Hughes after that to Billy Graham who will handle Ricky Hatton later. Grunewald's already caught Farnell with a nice right hand over the top. And he'll be looking to start quickly. Grunewald put himself into the fight and just put Farnell on the back foot. Good right hand from Grunewald. Farnell having to rebuild his confidence he's probably still at that stage of his career he's gone from being a, a headline act to a man having to fight just a little down the bill these days but he wants to get back there that's the start really with an important win here hasn't really beaten anybody much since the uh, tackle setback Battle the jab so far, Glenn. Yeah, Grunewald looking to push Farnell on the, the back foot. Farnell likes to come forward, likes to be aggressive, so he's been made to, to think a bit more here. Plenty on the line for both of these two. Grunewald, by the way, has won his last eight contests. He's only been beaten twice in his career, won an early career four-rounder. The other one by Butch Leslie, the Sarri-based Jamaican, in a gruelling contest, very close one, a couple of years back. And that suggests, although Grunewald is handy, he is beatable. But he feels he's the one that's got the opportunity. He's the one that's trying to grasp something. So maybe he just got a, a bit more determination as a, a sort of challenger. I think the fact of the matter is, if Farnell wants to be a star and get back to being a star, he has to be winning fights like this. Almost oh, definitely, he needs to, to win a fight like this and win in good fashion. But he's on the back foot, he's, he's thinking, he's a little reddened at the left-hand side of his face from some of these jabs from Grunewald. Grunewald may be that bit busier in the first round, though there's not a lot in it, in truth. Good body shots from the South African too. Just a little cautious 
far now, maybe taking the look early. Again, has to eat the jab. Run about for me. And it's a sparkling night of boxing with a big crowd and a big atmosphere here. Ricky Hatton arrives for his date with what is undoubtedly his toughest assignment against Damon McGee. But he's a nerveless character, Hatton. He always seems so relaxed. You'd think, really, he was going shopping in the Arndale Centre, wouldn't you? He's that sort of character. You know, really does seem destined for the, the big heights of this business. Takes it all in Only his stride. Only if he wins tonight, Glenn. Oh, most definitely. That's what, it's, that's what it's all about. But certainly has the character of a champion. What makes tonight so interesting is that for the first time, Hatton's in with an opponent that plenty of people in the trade think could well beat him. Although he is favourite, of course. Farnell from the same gym and with the same trainer. Second round, Anthony Farnell in the black trunks. They're fighting for the uh, middleweight championship as recognised by the comparatively minor World Boxing Union. These guys are not up there with Bernard Hopkins, Felix Trinidad, William Joppy, Howard Eastman and Harry Simon. But it would be a stepping stone for the winner. Well, it's good body shots from Grunewald. He's come here with a, a big air of confidence. Yeah, the thing is, he fancies the job. He's not just there as the opponent against the local house fighter, far from it. Well, that's why Hatton needs, sorry, Farnell needs some, some good punches in. Just take the play away from Gunnarvald a bit. Just a bit tentative in these early stages, Farnell, and Gunnarvald has come out that bit quicker. And with extra belief, maybe... That's all built on the rock-solid foundation of those wins he's been having lately. But it's maybe a plan of Farnell just to box his way and be a little more educated, think a bit more. Can't slip the jab at the moment, Farnell. There it is again. He just walks straight into that. Still technical improvements that need to be made with Farnell. Yep, he walks in a bit square on. He took a really solid jab, which just seemed to shut it down to his boots. There it is again, another jab from Grunewald, who's smart enough to know that it could be a key for him, and all the time it's succeeding, he's going to keep on throwing it. That's what he's doing. Farnell at the moment ragged by comparison, and with not enough work rate. Well, Farnell needs to avoid the jab to get his boxing going, to get some sort of rhythm. He certainly can't afford another setback, Farnell. Otherwise, he really will be back with the crowd of fighters who are, well, verging on the obscure. That's how cruel this business can be. Farnell looking to try and get his jab working a bit now. And if Grunewald maybe just won the first round, he's certainly winning the second pretty handily. <laughs> Left hook seemed to hit the gloves to me. Welcome back to Manchester. This is this uh, Ruben Grunewald, who's beaten the previously unbeaten Paul Bowen. He beat O.J. Abrahams as well, who can cause problems for some. And he was the All-African late middleweight champion. So there's a bit of pedigree there, isn't there? Yeah, he's got some credentials, but, you know, this is a, a bigger level than that. And, you know, but he started quite brightly using that jab to good effect. The Farnell fan club are worried early on. I wouldn't say Grunewald has taken control of the fight, not in any big way, but he's made the better start. Towards the end of the last round, Farnell just seemed to be getting his jab working and getting a, a bit more timing in his work. 
what Farnell does have is a lot of drive and determination and desire hitting around the back of the head Dave Paris the referee is not having that clean it up he says good referee fighters always know who's in charge when he's in there good body shots from the South African and then mixes in a left uppercut as well he's not a heavy hitter though and Farnell will keep on ploughing forward believing his time might come Grover getting the better from long ridge and inside Farnell made to miss with the right hand which he just telegraphed a little Farnell's had some good wins in his career notably one over Scott Dixon who he stopped in seven rounds he beat Howard Clark on points it was a pretty negative Howard Clark that night but Farnell did it well that's a bit better from Farnell that clubbing right hand that lifted him a little the heads clashed a little on the inside well he needed to find a few solid punches Farnell the reaction from the crowd but he needed something like that I think he tenses up, tenses up a bit on these big occasions, Farnell. I think that's what happened to him against Takalu when he was caught by that uppercut. Just needs to loosen up, find his rhythm. He's not done that yet. Grunewald hasn't let him, mind you. That's better from Farnell. He's just starting now to throw some of the punches that are in his armory but he needs to get a bit more rhythm, do a little bit more, take the play away from Grunewald. Farnell, 129, lost one. Sounds good on paper, but he still has plenty to prove in this business. He knows it. Still that jab that's upsetting the rhythm and not allowing Farnell to get his own shots off. Just a bit better from Farnell in this round. Well, he hit Grunewald more than he did in the first two rounds. We've seen Ricky Hatton arrive, Eamon McGee walking in. <laughs> He'd have been a good undertaker, wouldn't he? <laughs> Eamon McGee, he's, he's always got that expression. He has this reputation of being a sort of feisty, difficult individual, but I've always found him perfectly charming to deal with in conversation. Yeah, he's always been perfectly friendly. Um, he is a lot of a tough man, but he's having a bit of a smile there. He nearly smiled. <laughs> well, no, no. Come on, watch it, Eamon. <laughs> Good fighter, though. Don't underestimate this guy. Very precise and ruthless counterpuncher who made five defences of the Commonwealth title, and he believes this is his night. He really does. Fourth round. Farnell Black Trunks. Run about in the grey. That place Brackpan he comes from is where they have a Carnival City, which is where Lennox Lewis got knocked out by Hassim Rackman. Now, why isn't Farnell slipping more of these jabs in by this stage of his pro career? Well, that's really a big problem for him. He gets a bit tense, doesn't just have a little dip from side to side and get the rhythm going. But it's something he's got to learn if he's going to progress. A little right cross from Farnell in there. But a very slender amateur grounding. Farnell, only 25 amateur bouts. After being a real teenage tearaway, he used to turn up in the gym in his school uniform. Loves the business. But loving it and succeeding in it are two entirely different things. Well, he's got to do something about these jabs from Grunewald, which are catching him time and time again. Good 
good body shot from Farnell. He needs more of that sort of thing. He hasn't got his pressure fighter go going, and the reason, I think, for that is he just can't get past Grunewald's jab to apply the pressure. Yeah, he's got to show a little bit more variety, Farnell. He's got to try and slip some jabs, move in, you know, a little bit of lateral movement, and then have the attacks from different angles. I think that's always been the rap against Farnell, is that that's better from him, is that he is a shade one-dimensional. Yep, we're finally stepping in and getting some combination punches off, and that's what he needs. He needs to up the work rate. That's another good right hand. Grunewald felt the weight of that, just seemed to back off and breathe a bit more heavily for a moment. Probably Farnell's best punch yet, that. Farnell using that a little bit of the shoulder to get himself in position to get that right hand on, but it was certainly much better. It's a body shot which went low. He wanted the referee to intervene, suddenly realised he wasn't protecting himself and got back to work, Grunewald, when he saw that Dave Paris wasn't going to do much about it, but he definitely thought he was hit by a low blow. Now Farnell getting his own jab working, and this is much better. Just signs of hope now for Anthony Farnell. He'll do well to stop this fella, because no one else has. He'll do well to beat him. Historic boxing occasion coming up for you next Saturday on Sky Box Office. It's the fight the world's been waiting for. Lennox Lewis against Mike Tyson. The show underway at 10 o'clock next Saturday night. And the number to call for information, 08705 800 888. That's 08705 800 888. Fifth round WBU middleweight title on the line here. There's always some title on the line. Black trunks of Anthony Farnell, the grey of Ruben Grunewald of South Africa. Farnell just beginning to take hold of things. Early on, perhaps just reacting a little too much to what Grunewald was doing and let him set the pace. And I think Grunewald has a, a cut on Bubba's right eye. There's some blood there. Yes, he has, as he turns around to face us. Well spotted, Glenn. Grunewald's going to need maybe a little more than that jab, although it's worked pretty well for him so far, and Farnell, one has to say, is a sucker for it. Come on, where's the lateral movement? Where's the movement from the hip? From Farnell, he needs to be rolling inside a little more. Still pretty upright. That cut looks quite bad of Grunewald. It's getting worse. Blood is flowing into the eye. Decent left hand on the inside from Farnell. There's a fair right from Grunewald as well. Farnell will have gotten some confidence from that cut. Now starting to pick it up. We think a left hand caused the cut. There was another good left hand from Farnell as well. I just think Grunewald is feeling the weight of Farnell's punches. He's the heavier hitter of the two. And although Grunewald's landing plenty, it's having less effect than Farnell's successes. They're just going to wipe the blood away from the eye. Just take a look at that. I don't think there's any great risk of the fight being stopped at this stage. Just wanted to satisfy himself that everything was OK. Dave Paris, he has to put the fighters' health and safety first at all times. Grunewald will realise that the referee is concerned. That might just spur him on a bit, and make him do a bit more than he has been. By the way, if it was stopped, they wouldn't go to the scorecards. It would be like a British situation. The guy who was cut would lose the fight. Decent right hand. In fact, better than decent from right, uh, from far now. Picking it up well, Farnell now. This jab working good now from Grunewald. He's just got a little bit more steel into his jab. Two fair body punches from Farnell. The pattern is set. They're going to have to do 
more work on that cut between the rounds. And he's got a cut by the other eye now. I thought it was the blood smearing from the other one, but there is, I think, a second cut. Well, that's going to make it very difficult for Grunewald. Things beginning to go far now's way. They're telling him in the corner there, you've got to go all out, otherwise you're going to get beat. They're worried in there, aren't they now? Yep, they are worried. Obviously, he's cut over both eyes. He maybe just feels that the, the jab's not enough. That I think they want more work. They want him to really take it off. There's the, the good jab from Farnell that caused the cut. A really good jab, pushing the head back. And pretty bad cut, Farnell targeting that one with the right hand coming in as well to open another cut over the left eye. And of course, the fact that Grunewald is cut is diminishing his level of confidence. Yep, doing less and less. Six round, Farnell's turned this back a bit. Dave Paris is not happy, there's still some water in the corner, which could become something of an ice rink for the fighters. Now, let's see if Grunewald reacts to what the corner told him and really goes for it in this round. Well, it's one thing being taller in the corner, it's another thing going out there and doing it, especially if you're getting hit with hard shots. Run about more accurate with his jab than Farnell is when he uses that same weapon. Can he win the fight on jabs alone, though? Well, I think the corner thing, not. They want him to, to be more aggressive, to take the fight to Farnell. And I think that's what he has to do, along with the good jabbing. level of self-belief growing after a tentative start. We're going to have a couple of deep breaths here and there, and you just feel you know, he's doing less. And the cuts damage is pretty bad. Both eyes blinking away the blood. Dear Paris saying you hold again, I'll take a point off to Farnell. Really good jab by Grunewald, which knocked Barnell back across the ring, about two feet. Well, that's what he needs, Grunewald, but he needs to put something behind it, some combinations. I think the problem for Farnell is he's always going to be in hard, grueling fights, which are not going to give him much longevity. All the time he's got a defence like this, he's already had a lot of pretty tough ones along the way, hasn't he? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, it's just his style. He's going to make them all pretty hard. So you have fights like this all the time. You can look an old man by the time you're 25. Good right hand. I think he knows he's been getting to Grunewald. Well, Grunewald's jab in this round has worked very well. Nice combinations from him as well. Superior boxing of Grunewald against the superior power of Farnell. That's what this seems to be boiling down to. Low blow with the left hand, very low from Farnell. Well, another warning that a point may come up this time for a low blow. Well, he's on the brink of it, isn't he, Farnell? Right. Well, uh, Anthony Farnell is uh, walking the tightrope a little bit because the referee is warning him he might be taking a point off he's already had one warning and there was the low blow yeah definitely a low blow but look at the eyes of granville they're having to work very hard in his corner as we see fornell's corner there 
Grunewald, by the way, was uh, chief sparring partner for Roman Karmazan in the build-up to the fight that never happened against Oscar De La Hoya, but he's still got the benefit of all the work, Grunewald. Four weeks in the States. And that's better with his own jab from Farnell. Right eye looks to be closing of Grunewald. And the right cross seemed to just seemed to miss its target, I was going to say. And he just sort of pulled him down, didn't he, Glenn? Yeah, just pulled him down, arm on the back of the head, and pulled him down. Another warning from Dave Paris. He still hasn't deducted a point. Grunewald really impressive with the left jab. And Farnell has no answer to that. But he's looking to wing away, and Billy Graham, the trainer, was telling him between the rounds, get the left hook into the body. He did that then. Grunewald felt that one too. Farnell's corner think that Grunewald is tiring. Well, I think they could be right with that. But Farnell must be feeling the pace as well. He's took a lot of left jabs. Left uppercut, a jarring-looking shot, and a right cross. Just the feeling Grunewald starting to, the thing in there, starting to get a bit hard for him, coming apart maybe. Down that nice body shot again, Farnell. That might be the key that unlocks the door. And there it is, the jab that's worked so well. Farnell really has to do something about that. Well, we knew this would be a hard fight and probably a long fight too. It's gone seven so far. Difficult to judge some of these rounds. Grunewald doing that, the better work with the jab. Still no point deducted. <laughs> far now. He's had repeated warnings from Dave Paris. Has uh, been pretty lenient, really. Good spell for Grunewald there, really rocking the head of Farnell back. What do you like better? The cute boxing, the nice jabbing of Grunewald, or the occasional heavy eye-catching combination, and huge right hand from Farnell, but Grunewald's got this rock-solid chin. He can take it all. Well, you've got to judge it on solid punches landed, and you've got to judge them jabs. We're not at the amateur game quite yet, and the jabs are just building up the points for Grunewald. Interesting to know how the judges are seeing it. Hard to know which way this might go, Glenn, Don't isn't it? It is. It, at times, Granovel looking like he's starting to wilt. Then he comes back with some very good jabs. There was an excellent left uppercut from Farnell. He's getting the more powerful, the more eye-catching shots, like that right hand. But it's Granovel who's working all through the round with that jab. to the eighth round. I've got Grunewald just ahead on my card at this point. Well, I've got him ahead by three with the, the jab. I've got it by one, which really means we've just scored one round differently. Namely the third, I think it was. The right eye of Grunewald closing up all the time. I should think he could barely see out of that which is a problem because one of Farnell's favourite punches is the left hook. He's a gutsy fighter, isn't he? We knew he was going in. Yeah, we knew he was tough and determined and he's proving that. There's been doubts about Farnell's stamina in the past. Will this start to get to him as the, the fight goes on? Will he do less? Remember the Sergio Acuna fight in the last three rounds when he very nearly let it slip late on. But he has been the championship distance and completed it three times and stopped another fellow in the 12th. I don't think there's any doubt about Farnell's conditioning and fitness, but there's a big problem, I think, with his defence. Unless they improve that, he isn't going to last long in the business. 
No, it makes too many fights too hard. But he's entertaining, people like to watch him. Yep, it's all action style. There's another right hand. Oohs and ahs from the fans, many of them from the Clarendon pub in Manchester, which is uh, owned by his auntie, I think it is. Grunewald doing a bit less in this round. I think that closed right eye is troubling him. Let him go, let him go, let him go, hold it, let him go. He's just gone through a quiet patch, Grunewald. There's going to have to be a stoppage in a moment because uh, tape on the glove of Farnell has come loose. Here comes that stoppage right now. Farnell was wondering what it was about. <laughs> I think for a moment there, he was thinking, is he stopping the fight? Yeah, he was, <laughs> you always do that in the middle of a fight. You're not really sure of, of what's going on. Your concentration is so high, and uh, I think he was a bit puzzled there. How difficult are these little stoppages for fighters? You mentioned keeping the concentration. Well, you've got to keep the concentration going, the momentum going, and the rhythm, and sometimes it can really break the rhythm. But one thing it does do is give you a little respite, a little time to get a, a breather. Grunewald gets his jab going again in this close tough fight which means so much to both of these two fighters at the stage they both are in their careers again it looked to go on the lowish side from far now that right eye now is terrible terrible for Grunewald it's just a slit if he can see out of it at all I'd be surprised the round ends Farnell's pressure getting to him now they've got Philippe Fondue, the much-travelled former game hunter who seems to control a huge army of East European fighters among his many other incarnations in there working the cuts. I bet he's got his work cut out. He needs about five cut men in there. Yep, he's got a fair amount of damage, but I think it's not the cuts that are the problem, it's that swollen right eye. You know, Fondue's got a good left hook. He needs to be able to see that punch coming. Punch has landed so far, says Grunewald's landed 13 more. Farnell, slightly better success rate. Look how many they've both thrown there. Grunewald's up to nearly 500. I wonder how many of those were jabs. I think the, the vast majority, weren't they? But good jabs. Ninth round. Farnell in the black trunks. Brave performance this by Ruben Grunewald, the former African light middleweight champion, now London based, as he's a fitter, more focused fighter these days. But I think he must be getting a little bit dispirited and he'll have felt the anxiety in the corner about the cut's damage. Yeah, when he's not seeing that left hook come as well. This is a hard enough business with two eyes, isn't it, Glenn? Most definitely. The yeah, really handicap is a big one when you're in there. Farnell starting to get that left hook working now. Good left hook to the body. That's been a key punch tonight for Farnell. And it's played its part in weakening the South African. Well, for the first couple of rounds, Grunewald was using that punch, but he's he stopped doing that now. He's just pretty much relying on the jab, and he needs to, to throw more. Right hand miss. He's just off balance more than anything there, Farnell. And a right uppercut and down goes a very tired Grunewald. He's saying, I think, that it was a low blow that caused the problem. There was an uppercut, I'm not sure that did land, the uppercut. And it's the body punch Grunewald's complaining about. Another warning now for Farnell. Now, presumably that is counted as a knockdown, but it seems also that Dave Paris gave Farnell a warning about low blows on the back of it. So what to make of that is anybody's guess. Oh, right hand, Farnell walked right onto that, but took the punch. And 
what Grunewald could do with a bit more dynamism in, in his shots. He's looking the weaker of the two now, Grunewald can't see the punches coming. And he's bundled out of the ring, that is not a knockdown. Bundled out of the ring, but that's a sign of Farnell's extra strength. Farnell's cannon against Grunewald's comparative pea shooter. And that's one of his problems in there. And it's showing in the face of Grunewald. And he does look on the verge of falling apart now. Yeah, he does. He looks as if he's really struggling in there, Grunewald. Farnell can feel victory getting closer now. It's been a rough passage. He's been outboxed some of the way. Oh, that's a low blow from Grunewald. Have one back, he says. That was really low. That was... Goodness me. That was out of the Rocky Marciano manual, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it's just, I think he thought, if he, I'm going to get knocked off the referee, I'm going to get one back myself. It's obviously, if he can do it, I can do it. I think he just took the law into his own hands there. Now, Farnow is struggling. Uh, if, he should be given a maximum of five minutes. Fighters rarely take that. They've got too much bravado. Come on, let's get on with it, says Farnow. <laughs> he tried for one back himself, I think. You know, Billy Graham, in his uh, own way, is, is telling, is telling Ali Farnell in there that he thinks that Grunewald is completely exhausted, which may well be right. Well, here's the, the knockdown. And yes, very much a low blow. He turns away in that was. And well, let, let me raise a point here. It shouldn't have been counted as a knockdown, should it then? No, nope, it shouldn't, and it Wasn't will it? not be on my scorecard now. Because no. he did, after that, he did go to the... He did go to Farnell and give him a warning, so I don't think he would have counted that. And there was some concern with the referee while you were watching that, going over to Grunewald's corner. But I think they're, uh, I think they're going to go on. <laughs> That's where he took his retribution. That isn't and won't be counted a knockdown. It was... Uh, a no blow, and I think it was a question of uh, revenge for Grunewald. Tenth round. Black trunks, remember, final if you still need the identification. It's a typical Farnell fight, this, isn't it? Difficult for him, times when he doesn't look convincing, but somehow that fire and determination and pressure that he applies in his own way gets the job done. That's usually been the story. He'd love a, a rematch, I'm sure, with uh, Takalu, but of course they're at different weights now. Farnell out middleweight, and Takalu's still at light middle. Well, it's Farnell, the stronger of the two at this point. He's the one that's trying to get his hands free, trying to work inside. From somewhere, Grunewald trying to dredge up one last effort, get that boxing back together again. And there he is with the jab. So that's what the corner have told him. You were doing great with that. See if you can get back to it. Easy for them to say, harder for him to do with the handicap of boxing with one eye. No knockdown. Come on, suck up, Eugene Malona sh shouting to Ruben Grun about to suck it all up. Which well, translated then means... <laughs> it means he's very, very tired and he sees that you know, he's weakening and he's trying to give him a bit of inspiration there. But he can't see the punches coming at him with the left hand and Farnell getting them time and time again. That's a tough one. Now that's another low blow from Farnell. Now, he's got to have a point deducted now, and he has done. And he can have no complaints. That's overdue, as far as I'm concerned, to Farnell, who's transgressed quite a lot in the fight. Grunewald, very markedly, once himself. So one point off for Farnell, the equivalent of losing a round. That seems to have lifted Grunewald a bit. And he's got that jab working again, which he needed to do as another low blow goes in.
crowd trying to lift Farnell. But when he watches the video back of this fight, Farnell, he is going to be horrified, absolutely horrified by the number of jabs that he failed to slip. Sometimes I think he's trying that hard to get his own shots on. He forgets about his defense, Farnell. And if we're judging him harshly, that's because Sports Network and Frank Warren have been building him up as a bit of a golden child. Referee taking a long look at that eye of Grunewald. Really hard fight. Now the points deducted here for uh, for Farnell. Yep, two shots, both of them low blows. And it was about time he really, you know, he deserved that. He's got away with it a bit too long. One point off, says Dave Paris. That's it, he's done now. How close have you got it, Glenn? I've got it quite close. Yep, I've still got Grunewald one point ahead, 96-95. I've got uh, Farnell by one on my card. So we're just, uh, we both got it close. And uh, the WBU judges are Des Bloyd of Australia, who's doing a stint over here at the moment. He seems to be judging every fight that happens. Carl Rogers and Tony Walker. Both of England, the last two, incidentally. Could be there for the winning over these last six minutes. Good uppercut on the inside, twice over from Farnell, then a straight right. And he had thrown about on toast there for a few seconds. Well, he's the one that seems to have more left in these final stages, Farnell, but an excellent jab from Grunewald. Now, those are rabbit punches from Grunewald, and he knows it. But really, I think at this stage, and being this tired and one-eyed, he'll do anything to gain some kind of advantage. Well, he's done well in these late stages with that eye, Grunewald. And I think to put this fight in context, and they're calling it a WBU championship fight. Remember this guy, Grunewald, useful fight of the years, lost to Butch Leslie. So this is really only British level stuff from Farnell. He's making hard work of it. The body shot in there now. Has that gone low again? Uh, Delroy Leslie, I should say. But uh, that is a another look low blow. Grunewald complains. And it, again, he has been given the maximum time. Take that time, Eugene Maloney in the corner. Shouts at him, take the time. Now, should this be another point off for Farnell? It should be, shouldn't it? <laughs> You'd think so. I mean, you know, he's already been warned about it. He's had a point deducted. Now he does the... And it, yes, he's deducting another point. Another point off for Farnell. Now, this could be vital. Or has he deducted two points? It, it looked like he deducted a further two points for the second transgression. Well, it wasn't the second, it was the second punishable one. In which case, that could put Farnell in real trouble on the cards. It's lifted Grun about, who thinks, hang on a minute, I could be in business again here. He's got to be careful, Grunewald doesn't walk on to anything. Farnell will be looking to get them hooks on. Those blows could be really, really vital for Farnell. Could be a big mistake. Well, if we read that right, he's got three points deducted. No, there's no knockdown. No knockdown. He just slipped over for an about who's very tired and is welcoming these breaks, isn't he? Yeah, they're yeah. helping him. They are helping him. He seems the more tired fighter. He did seem tired. He did seem as if he was starting to just dip towards his knees. Dave Paris. Little warning, any more of it, I'll throw you out. 
presumably to find out. Definitely to find out. Well, they're throwing all caution to the winds now and just letting the punches fly as best they can. That's a good uppercut on the inside from Farnell. Well, he's trying so hard to get the shots on Farnell. Maybe he should just take a time, look for the punches a little more. It just seems to me with Farnell, he's just not one thing or the other. He's quite a useful puncher, but he, he doesn't seem to put people away. Grunneville very, very tired in there. He really is struggling to stay on his feet. He's using all that famed resilience of his. Farnell won the round, but had two points deducted, so I guess that makes it a 10-9 round for Grunewald on the scorecard. Well, if, it, if it was, I'm not sure if it was a two points. I've got to go as if it was one point. I give it 10-9 Farnell, less than one, 10, 10, the last two rounds. It's getting confusing, isn't it? <laughs> to put it mildly. <laughs> and we have no real way of checking that either until after the fight at a, a crowded ringside here but he certainly held up two fingers didn't he uh, at one point at well, the referee well, there. The, well that was just his way of seeing let's have a look watch what he does yeah now that, that to me says two points deducted yeah pretty pretty clear isn't it that's how it looks it certainly looks like that definitely two points now we can confirm it we've got uh, spies all around the ringside that is the situation in which case this might be very, very close indeed. You've got Eugene Maloney. He's forgotten to put the gum shield in, in the middle of all that. That's all Grunewald needs, isn't it? Well, pretty confusing in there in a tough fight, and it could all really hinge on this last round. Which Grunewald starts with an authoritative blitz of jabs. Intriguing and eventful fight one way and another. Take your hats off to the commitment and passion and conditioning, of course, of both fighters. But I think I would also have to add it's a fight that shows that these two are some way from world class, whatever label you choose to put on the fight. Oh, good shot! And a cracking right hand from Farnell! Has he done it again with a 12th round stoppage? He's done it in the recent past. And that could seal it for Farnell, despite all his low blow problems. Grunewald can't have anything left, surely. The referee takes a close look. Farnell might render the scorecards irrelevant. It's some finish. Well, halfway through the last round, and can Grunewald just hang on? Can he stand up? He's very, very tired. Farnell will go all out now. He looks like a tottering tree in a gale for an about at the moment in there. He's not really moving around the ring, he's kind of stumbling around it. Uppercut from Farnell, who's had the best of the second half of the fight with his extra pressure, but has had three points deducted for persistent low blow fouling. That's just a slip by the look of it. Don't push him down. Another transcription by Farnell. Same thing again, yeah, hand on the back of the head. That was a good right hand, he's tottering Grunewald. Down goes Farnell now in this extraordinary final round. Last half a minute. So oh, what drama in this fight. Farnell desperate to land the big one. He's looking for a knockout blow, even as late as the last quarter of a minute. And Grunewald does look ready to go, but somehow he still stays in there. It'll be some effort by the South African to hear the final bell. He's been boxing with one eye for four or five rounds of this. Again, a big right hand from Farnell as the bell goes to end what proved to be a pretty titanic struggle 
in the closing stages between these two. So much incident. Lamy, I hope you were paying attention. I'll be asking questions later. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me any later. Three points off far now, but I think he won the last round uh, quite beyond dispute. And I've got Farnell a narrow winner. Well, there's the left hook the body, left hook the head, right hand over the top. Beautiful combination from Farnell. And Granovel did so well to get it from that. Look at that, beautiful punches. Granovel was so tired. He really did that well, Farnell. It was a terrific rally to find this. Whatever other reservations you'd have about a performance, if you can do that when you're tied in the last round, that was class, wasn't it? Yeah, that was real class. Excellent combination. Now There's that, that push down on the back of the neck. Wasn't given as a knockdown. I think rightly so. Good refereeing by Dave Paris. That pick that up. And then this, yeah, that also no count, although he got just down as he was pushed down. Well done to both of them. They provided a spectacle. They certainly will have no complaints from the spectators. But do you think Farnell's won? On my card, I've got it a draw. Have you? It comes out a draw on my card. I've got it to Farnell by a couple. Well, there's Glenn's scorecard. He's got it level. Frank Warren is making one or two angry signs to us in there. I don't know if he's got a preview of the scorecards, but I thought he was mouthing to us that Grunewald had been made the winner of the fight. Now, that has all got to be confirmed, in which case there'll be a bit of uproar. These are the three people deciding it. Des Bloyd, Carl Rogers, Tony Walker. I mean, for a lot of the journey there, it's whether you liked the nice jabbing and boxing of Grunewald or Farnell's heavier punches which might have been a bit more spasmodic and then you've got the three points off for Farnell as well. Yeah, he threw it away a little bit with the, the, the low blows. You've got to go with the jabs and you, you can't not score jabs. Those good solid jabs and you know, they've got to count. Some confusion and chaos around here. Frank Warren looks angry and Farnell is his fighter. So one of the three judges involved in the totting up process here. Has Farnell been beaten for a second time? If so, it would be a nightmare setback for him. But it begins to look like that, judging by the body language we're getting from everybody. They're beaming in Grunewald's corner. He's going around the ring like a winner. Look at Farnell. Have you ever seen this before? It seems that the, the, the scorecards are some kind of open secret in the ring there to everybody. Well, Why aren't they being announced then? I have no idea, but it seems that people do know what has happened but it is to be confirmed but I think it's pretty apparent what's happened here we go now let's get it officially ladies and gentlemen we have the judges scorecards they are as follows judge Des Bloyd of Australia scores the contest 114 to 110 Judge Carl Rogers scores the contest 113 to 111. And Judge Tony Walker scores the contest also 113 to 111. All three judges in favor of the winner by unanimous decision and new WBU middleweight champion of the world, Ruben Grunewald. Grunewald it there are boos around the arena it was certainly arguable i wouldn't be at all surprised if we didn't see a rematch of that sometime in the Ladies fairly near future when those wounds have healed you could debate that either way i thought farnell had got it by a couple of points you had it level but all three judges have given it to grunewald and farnell has lost the fight because of the three points he lost for the low blows yeah most definitely careless trying too hard and he threw it away with that but he should have slipped the jab more remember the good work from them jabs early on from grunewald farnell can't believe it frank warren can't believe it crisis of war with his partner frank maloney who's a bit more lined up with the grunewald camp to be perfectly honest with you 
There's a right old row going on. There really is. All this and Ricky Hatton still to come. Well, well, well. A shell shocked Anthony Farnell. It's gone wrong for him again. It was close, it was close, and he's paid for those low blows. Tell you what, Dave Paris isn't going to be the most popular man in town with the Frank Warren and Farnell camps, but I don't think they can really complain because he let Farnell go quite a long way before he penalised him at all. Yep, he did, he let him off the hoop quite a bit. Saturday night with the WBU, never dull, never predictable. But Farnell's stablemate Ricky Hatton is the one outstanding star that they've brought through to world attention. And backstage, Hatton makes final preparations for our long-awaited top of the bill tonight. Forget the titles, it's about finding out who is the best of our light welterweights. Hatton McGee is next here live. But a disappointment out in the arena and a great sense of anti-climax for the tens of thousands of Hatton and Farnell camp followers. No wonder Farnell's promoter, Mr. Warren, looks very, very unhappy. Too late. Grunewald, a unanimous points winner. And Eugene Maloney and his crew will feel they have proved their point here, away from home. what was a brawl. Sounds like a vain attempt by Farnell to try to calm the anger in the crowd. It hasn't boiled over, I have to point that out, but there's a lot of very disappointed Farnell followers. Well done to him for that. But sadly, he's having to learn how to take defeat well, isn't he? Let's hear from him now. Well, Anthony, you're obviously totally and utterly devastated by that. What's your take of the way the judges scored it? I, I can't get... I don't know yet, you know what I mean? I can't get it through. By four points and two points twice, was it the low blows that cost you? I thought I, thought, I, I, thought I boxed it off, it really did it. He wasn't hitting me clean a lot of time. No, he, he caught me a few times, yeah. But he wasn't it. No, I was jabbing his head off. What do you think about it, Adam? Who do you think won that fight? Well, you were the aggressor, yeah, and he was boxing think, well with a jab. I'm in Manchester, in the old town. They take it away, that. But you distressed a few times, and you were warned time and time again by Dave Paris. That could have been, that could have been the Paris. problem. I know, I know they hit him low once. It was no, accidental. But, you know, I, I was trying to fight inside. He was holding him. He was close to me. But, you know, I got told, hit, you know, if, even if he's short, so, low, you know, hit, hit him on the hip, and it's all right. So I, I thought, you know, I did hit him low once, so I might deserve one point. But, you know, I'm in my own town. Well, let's bring Frank Warren straight in. You are absolutely furious. Yeah, I am, because there's three points, if I'm correct, been taken off. He's taken the three points off. One of the judges made it a draw. I think it was 113, 110. So how can that be? How was that fight ever going to be a 114, draw? 114, 110, 113, 111 and 113, right. so, 111. So a couple of them even had to take the points. I still had Greenwald the winner. He was never the winner of that fight. In that stage, just somewhere along the line, the score has gone crazy there. The referee he, he, and he, judges, what do you say about them? I was very disappointed. Um, Dave's a friend of mine. I was very disappointed with Dave Paris a couple of times. But having said that, he deserved to have some have points taken off where, with some of the low blows. However, the facts of the matter are, I don't think he lost the fight even with the points off. I really don't think it. He's you know, it, it was, so what do you say to the WBU, an automatic rematch? Well, we're going to have a rematch. There'll certainly be a rematch. I'll make sure there's a rematch. Don't worry about that. There will be a rematch and he will get his opportunity again. We're not being bad losers. You know, if somebody loses on merit, fair enough. But he was the aggressor throughout the point. I think he was throwing most of the clean punches. He was throwing most of the, what I think, the scoring punches. A lot of Groomwood's punches were just tap, tap. He was, I, I just think he was the aggressor and I think he deserved the fight, even with the points taken off. Thanks for your honesty, guys. We'll see you soon, Anthony.